What's up, y'all? So I'm officially two months and some change into my coding journey, right? And there's a lot to unpack. I've hit some high highs and some hard walls, all right? But let's get into it. So the most important thing I've completed so far is the foundations course for the Odin's project, or the Odin project, bar none, bar none. But we'll come back to that in a bit. So the other things I've completed, I started with the Head First series for uh, HTML and CSS, and that was a pretty good series. I feel like I really learned the basics of HTML and CSS in that. Um, they had some pretty cool projects. It was a great starting point. And you see, when I started coding all this, I started coding it on Notepad, which was absolutely brutal. So we can take a look real fast at some of those projects that I did from the Head First series. So let's jump on over. All right, so here we have the MyPod. Uh, this is a project, just simple HTML styling, you know, the header, um, H1s, H2s, H3s, paragraph placement, adding pictures in, very simple page, simple background, simple image, nothing too complicated at all. Pretty cool project, a lot of fun. Like I said, this just gets used to the basics. They then had you do this My Trip Around the, their USA, Segway in USA, another cool little project they had you do. You know, you added some uh, borders, the outlines at least, or the underline, uh, more headers, some more images, some lists. Um, I even forgot what you call that. <laughs> Making a block text, uh, bullet list, an or unordered list, an ordered list, an unordered list. Um, some good stuff. Then I have you make the Star Buzz coffee menu. Again, more, more HTML, more CSS styling. Adding the images, making the logos up here for the Star Buzz. Floating that over to the right. Um, aligning the elements, making sure everything grows and shrinks accordingly what that's called but making sure the page functions as it should right and then the last thing they have you do is the head first lounge again you float something to the right you make its own little special uh, drink menu over here in this little bar adding more images going through it's just very simple stuff just simple HTML simple static web pages list unordered list very basic very simple very easy and highly recommend for jumping into it right off the bat all right, next we had head first JavaScript. All right, now, a little disclaimer about head first JavaScript. When I started doing this book, I got about nine chapters in before I just <clears throat> hit a wall, bro. I hit a wall, I couldn't move any forward. All progress halted, all right? We started dealing with arrays and iterating through arrays and like pulling things out, pushing things in to find information, and I did not have a firm understanding of like the chapters beforehand leading into this like none of it really settled in like I kind of knew but I didn't really know and that chapter exposed me like all throughout the chapter I kept having to jump to the back of the book and look at the answer to progress because I just didn't know and no matter how long I stared at the text the answer wasn't coming so I had two choices at this point to move forward or go back but before we jump into that I'll show you some of the projects we did head first JavaScript to. I think I have one or two. Um, let's jump on over. So they do a lot of in console coding, right? Like a lot of things you do, you'll do it in the console. Simple things like modifying text and you know, playing little games in the console, FizzBuzz. Actually, I don't even think FizzBuzz is in there. Things like FizzBuzz, similar concepts that you do, you know, in the console. So one of the first real projects you do where you manipulate the DOM was this little project here where they give you a blurry image and a non-blurry image and you make it so that when you click on the image something happens shows the image and after a set amount of time it goes away you can make it so you can click on and off uh, you do a different bunch of different things with the image right but i thought it was pretty cool Ooh, somebody's buzzing me but i thought it was pretty cool right very simple showed you what javascript can do gave you an understanding of manipulating the dom very simple very simple not complicated at all right unless you're learning it for the first time like I was, then uh, <laughs> you might be struggling for a little bit. But then the next project they have you work on in there that's like a real project is gonna be this battleship game. And I thought this was really cool. Like this was as far as I had gone at this point. I spent an entire Saturday grinding on this thing, trying to get it to work and it's so cool. Very limited in its capability, right? Like um, you obviously have to build the HTML for it. It's built on a data table, right? That was called. Uh, <laughs> the table, there we go, the table. All right, you build it on the table, you build a grid at the table, you assign um, 
you grab each table in the DOM, and then from there, you kind of build the grid, make each point reactive to your inputs down here. I did a terrible job of explaining that, by the way, but that's gonna come with time. I'm still working. Half the reason for this channel is work on uh, developing, communicating these ideas, so comes with time. So right now we have A6, you fire, you missed, uh, B6, fire, miss, oh shit. So as you can see, um, I don't think I'm gonna hit anything. I'm trying to hit something so I can show you guys a hit, but I don't think it's gonna happen. What? I hit D5. So I'm not hitting anything. It'd be cool if I could show you guys. I'm still missing up here. It's not as uh, involved as I'd like it to be. It's a very bland battleship, but it was like the first one I made like this. I gotta get one hit. I gotta get one hit. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get a hit. E4. Hit! There we go. Oh shit, nothing happened when I hit. Um, so, this is definitely not the complete one. <laughs> it's supposed to show a little picture of a boat there when you get a hit. Uh, but yeah. So I built this battleship project, it's pretty cool. Um, and that was pretty much around where I stopped. I went to the next chapter, they had you do more console drills, and that was when I started hitting my head against the wall. No shit, it got real hard around then. So then I was kind of at a standstill for a little bit, like what do I do next? I was getting, I was getting kind of frustrated, like really angry, because I couldn't move on, dude. Like, I was stuck, I was legit stuck, right? So I would do certain things, like I'd look on the, I'd join the programmer Reddit, and I'd look around on there for ideas, inspiration, see what other new people were doing. And um, somewhere along the way, I stumbled across a code editor. I evolved <laughs> from <laughs> using Notepad, and I got VS Code, which I highly, highly, highly recommend VS Code, 100%. Please do not code on Notepad. Get a code editor, get VS Code, just do it. Save yourself some time. All right, so we got the code editor, and then I um, stumbled across Udemy, and there was this cool Udemy class called uh, the Complete Front End Web Dev course. Pretty good. It had a lot of cool concepts in there. It introduced me to jQuery for the first time. I had no idea what that was, um, like a library. So kind of got to work with jQuery. It, it hammered in the details of the front end, you know, HTML again. So it was like my second HTML learning session. More CSS more beginner JavaScript, focused a lot on the DOM, but this one ended with a really cool project where you made a pit boy So let's jump on over to that. So for this one, you ended up making a pit boy here, which is fucking badass, you know? They didn't walk you through completing all of it, but it got you started in the right direction. You have to like load, you know, you make the divs for the bars. It's made in bootstrap, so you had to practice a, um, I guess call it a CSS framework, huh? I'm not sure what that is. A CSS library? CSS library. Bootstrap. And then, um, so it's made in Bootstrap. Gave you a lot of experience working with divs, you know, understanding how to style with divs. Like, I never would have known beforehand that these little health bars are just two divs. <laughs> you know, one div inside. <laughs> or one div making the frame, and the other div filling up the inside. Uh, the little style bars up here, just divs. Just a div, this one doesn't have a bottom. Like, it's so, once you learn it, it makes sense that you style like that. But beforehand, before doing this, I was just like lost. Like even these little indents over here on the edges of the screen, I don't know if you guys can see those. It's just, it's just a div. It's really cool. Importing the pictures in, you know, getting your pictures, uh, converting them in the JavaScript, placing them in there, making them the same color, like messing with the opacity and the coloring of everything, making the scan lines. Like you guys see how there's like little scan lines in there. He, the course goes through all that. It's pretty in-depth. I'll do a terrible job of explaining it. Maybe one day I'll go back in and kind of deconstruct this project. A lot of fun. But yeah, it was super cool. And the best part is when you go to the inventory, you know, you get the inversion on the color slider, the inversion when you mouse over, just like the game. I thought this was so fucking cool. All right, you got the stats down there that changes with each weapon. You learn a lot, man. You learn a lot from this project. Very cool course. If you guys are interested in learning, it's called the Complete Front End Web Dev Course, Web Development Course on Udemy. Highly, highly recommend that. And then once I wrapped up that course and that project, it was time to move on to the next thing, right? I was like, do I want to go back to the head first book, finish it up? I had a way better understanding of JavaScript now. It's on a way more solid foundation. 
I was this close. I decided to look at some more things. I checked out some books, eloquent JavaScript. I got like four chapters in there. I made it to the chapter with arrays before I got kind of like, it explains things wonderfully, but I needed more sources of information. Once I hit the arrays, I was like, shit, I gotta go look somewhere else. So I jumped from that. I started reading um, Pragmatic Programmer. Is that what it's called? Let me look at my board over here. Yeah, Pragmatic Programmer. Uh, learn about the dry principle there. Don't repeat yourself. Very good book. Didn't understand. I think it's in C plus plus or C sharp. I think it's in C sharp. So it's in one of those languages that I don't know. I know JavaScript, so I wasn't too sure. Like when they had gave the coding examples, I was like, uh, I looked through it, tried to piece it together, understand what was happening. But uh, yeah, and then from there, I uh, finished that book and moved on to. I'm currently reading. Think like a programmer so that's a really good book about like 130 pages in made it to the chapters on arrays on this one and we're getting through it all right we're getting better with arrays for sure for sure and then i stumbled across a post on a programmer reddit about the odin project right that was insane at the very beginning of the odin project they have you install a virtual machine on your computer and put linux on it right just so you can get access to git if you guys don't know what git is it's version control. It's pretty much like an external memory card that you save your projects on and it saves each individual save. So if you ever need to go back to a certain instance of your project, it's saved there. And you can use GitHub to access that memory card, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, you go right into using the command line, opening up the terminal. I felt like a fucking hacker in the terminal, honestly, but whatever. So that was really cool. I never done any of that before. Never worked through a terminal, never had a virtual machine, never used Linux. So right off the bat, I had a lot of fun with that. I learned a lot and it was so easy and so streamlined. I'll actually probably end up making a whole separate video going over that the Odin Project Foundations tutorial, the very first one. Fantastic, highly recommend it. But I liked that virtual machine so much that I even ended up switching my, or not switching, rather dual booting my computer in Linux and Windows. I like having the Linux option because as you can see, I'm in my game room, right? <laughs> I'm in my game room and uh, there's a lot of distractions on Windows. So when I boot in Linux, I'm focused, it's all work. Right now, even I'm making this video on Linux. So it's pretty cool. Not gonna lie. I'm still learning Linux. I'm still learning how to use the terminal. That's a whole nother double though. But the biggest change in the last two months has been my ability to read code. Like when I first started, I couldn't look at code and know what was going on and I couldn't write code and know what was going on. Like it was very confusing. But the more you did it, the more you write it, the more you see it, the more you immerse yourself in it, the more it makes sense. Like at the beginning, I'd have a small syntax error somewhere and it would mess everything up. And something simple like CSS, I'd forget a colon somewhere or maybe forget a closing bracket and throw everything off. And I'd look at it and look at it and look at it and not find the answer. And I'd be very irritated. But over time, you get used to looking for that kind of stuff, finding those things, and learning how to use those um, checkers, like the HTML and CSS checkers out there by the W3 schools, I believe they're called. Those are really useful as well. Like, you learn that over time, but you gotta grind. You gotta, you, you gotta get stuck to, to find solutions like that. But it's nice being able to find the small errors, like even the ones that pop up in the console where it's like, you know, something's missing or incomplete. You can click, look at it and be like, okay, I know exactly what that is and why that's happening and get it done, which is so nice compared to the beginning. So nice. You're just so much more efficient. Oh, man. But my attitudes changed too. It used to be when I hit a wall, I would get discouraged. I'd be like, fuck, man, can I really do this? Is this really possible right now? And you know, you'd have a problem and you didn't know how to, to search the problem on Google or to, like find the answer. You didn't know how to word the problem. So you really didn't know what the problem was. And there was just this whole mess around it. But if you stuck through, if you had grit and you grinded it out and you found the answer, you were way less likely to make that mistake the next time and you'd know how to spot it faster the next time, which always happens. It's amazing. It's amazing how it happens, all right? The more problems you run into, the more you end up finding the solutions and the more you learn. So build more shit, find more problems, have more solutions, simple. There's also a cool little website that I, I use uh, for practicing and learning in general. It's called, make sure I say this right, Edibit Code Games, right? They have games, little JavaScript games or puzzles you can do. They range from very easy to difficult. What's nice about this site, I tried other sites, like, uh, I'm not going to name their names, I can't remember the names, but I've tried other sites, and 
and they were just too hard for me as a beginner. Like I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know like, I didn't even know what I didn't know. I still don't know what I don't know. So there was a lot that I just didn't know. But Edibit gives you like the problem and then you can click the resources tab and it gives you the source, the source documentation for ways to solve that problem. Not telling you the answer, just like kind of pointing you in the right direction, which is really good as a beginner because you get to you get exposed to a lot of things you didn't know even existed. So highly recommend Edibit games, Edibit code games. Highly, highly recommend. And um, it's great. Makes you feel good. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up there. It's been a kind of a long one. Um, but yeah, that's my experience so far. My first two months in some change. Two months and some change. It's like two months and a week. Close enough though. But yeah, um, let me know if you guys are going through a similar journey. Let me know what's up. If you have any questions, do ask below. I'll reach out and answer as soon as possible. And uh, you guys take it easy, all right? Peace.